validation on it. I haven't put validation on it simply because I'm assuming validation is old hat. We're all experts in it now, and, and I don't really need to, to demonstrate that. If you want me to demonstrate that, I can put one up oh. there. But, yeah, that, that's the only reason I haven't done it is, yeah, of course, and, uh, you know, I, I haven't put in a header and a navigation and a master page either. Right, because I, I'm just assuming that, that you would do these things. I'm just demonstrating the part of the, the stuff that's distinct to this is the bottom line. Actually, in this case, if you just ran it open like that, you'd get everything back. It's a good question. Yeah, why doesn't it show it initially, though? Yeah, it shows nothing. And I think that's because... I'll bet we could change that by... I think I heard someone say a clever answer. I said if you did percent sign... Or if you put the default a percent sign. I think actually what happens is there's a property here that says if I don't get anything for the question mark, don't do anything. Maybe not. Maybe it is. Cancel select on null parameter. Here we're going to get everyone. Or not. I thought we'd get everyone. Would have to look at it. But the bottom line with this <coughs> is that there might be another parameter that goes with this. I'm not sure. And it might have to do with that default on the parameter um, property. Like the old commercial for um, spaghetti sauce, it's in there. You know, well, what about the garlic? It's in there. What about the what, uh, olive oil? It's in there. In an object-oriented world, the question is, is there's probably a property that controls it. Uh, ASP.NET is a very rich framework, and as such, it's very likely that there is a parameter that will control that, and we could probably, if we wanted to, find it. In a way, I kind of like it the way it is because, you know, what kind of wise, you know, go to Google and not put anything in. You know, you'd break the internet if you did that, right? <laughs> um, so, therefore, um, it's probably good for a search to work this way. There may be other occasions where you would not want it to work this way, but um, I, I'm sure some mix of parameters uh, would do that. Um, I was looking up a case where you could uh, amend your SQL statement. Right now we have obviously the select and the froms and whatnot. But I was seeing some wording such as, uh, for example, where not exist, print, and then whatever your little message is. So, for example, if the SQL wasn't there at all, no matches, zip, you could have where not exist, and then print like, sorry, Charlie, nothing matches. I don't know if that's the proper way to amend. Did, didn't I just do that? With uh, with the empty query property or something. But you you had that as it being there omnipresent beforehand, as opposed to after you did a search. The where the where exists I don't think is working the same way. I, I'm not sure where you saw it, but where exists is actually for something else. That would look for, for example, if I'm looking for people that didn't vote, I could use a where exist select star from vote table. All right. Um, the bottom line is, yeah, you probably could um, do something like that. I could, you know. Worst case scenarios, I could, through CSS, hide that message the first time through if I wanted to. There's a workaround. Um, I guess there's, there's bigger fish to fry than to 
um, sit and, and look at every minute aspect of this. So we'll go on to the bigger fish. All right. Um, if, if you still have questions, we can work through this in lab. But I do want to make sure we get through um, the rest of the items um, on this example. All right. Next thing I want to do is I want to make a count. All right. So what do I need to change to do that? Need to change the data source first off. I'm also going to need to change the grid view because I'm going to want to display that. All right. So I'm going to need to include the vote table. All right. That's a given. We already decided that. I'm going to need to include a count star. What else do I need to do? I need to join the two tables together. So where vote dot user ID equals user dot user ID. I forgot the and. What else do I need to change here? I need the group by. And what needs to be in the group by? Everything that's not the aggregate function, which would be these three fields. There's an error executing the query. Hmm, what do I do now? Well, a couple things I could do. Um, my suggestion would be to bring this guy in access and test it that way. How do I test it that way? Well, I go into access. Create query design, close out of there, go to SQL view, paste this guy in. The only thing I'm going to have to change is I'm going to have to hard code in the H because there's no parameter. So I'm going to go here and hard code the H. Ah, the specified field user ID could refer to more than one table listed in the from clause of your SQL statement. Ah, all right. You see what it did, all right. I specify I want to select user ID, and that was okay when it was just the user table in play. Now the user table and the vote table are in play, so I can no longer simply say user ID. I have to go in and say user oops, dot user ID there and do the same thing there. Why was it okay before? It was okay before because there was only one table that I was dealing with that had user ID in it. Now there's two tables that have user ID, so I have to say which one I want it from. Now we'll go in here and test it. And we're back in business. Now, here's why I didn't do much formatting to the grid view, right? Because I just changed the SQL statement substantially. Notice before when I changed the SQL statement, it didn't ask me this, right? Because all I did was I took, tacked a WHERE clause in, I tacked an ORDER BY clause. I didn't really affect the data that it was returning. 
Now I'm affecting the data that's returning. So it's asking me if I want to regenerate the grid view, and I'm going to say yes. All right. So it redoes the grid view, includes all the data. Now I can go and make this pretty. All right. So I can go in here. I can edit columns. I can hide the user ID. We're going to need it behind the scenes, but we don't really need to see it. Change the text of this guy to first name. Change the text of this guy to last name. Change this to maybe something like votes. All right. So now when we run this, it should be okay. Mike Zeller's voted in one poll. Do a search for H. These guys all voted in one poll. All right. With me so far. Now, what's the net? Well, we're just about done with this page. What's the last thing we have to do? We have to make a link to the second page. All right. And if you remember, I said I wanted the text of the link to be the last name. All right. But what do I want to? What do I want to to uh, pass on the query string? User ID. So with that link, there's two fields that are important. There's the text of the link, which is the last name. And there's the query string value that I want to pass, which is a user ID. It's almost like what you have with a dropdown, right? If you remember with the dropdown, we would have sort of the text that the user sees and sort of the value behind the scenes. It's really the same sort of idea. We want the text of the link to be the last name because that makes sense to a user. We want the um, value, though, that gets passed on the query string to be the user ID. So, what do I need to change? Do I need to change the SQL data source? I'm seeing someone shaking their head no. Why not? We're getting all the information. We right. From the Good question. I tried to ask why not, like in a way that maybe would cause you to doubt yourself, but you didn't. All right? You didn't call my bluff. And you're absolutely right. We're not changing the SQL data source because we have the ingredients that we need. Right? We have the last name and we have the user ID. So we don't need to change the SQL data source. What we need to change is the manner in which that data is displayed. Instead of being displaced as simply dumb text fields, we need to make one of those things, namely the last name, a link. So I'll go here, and I'll say edit columns, and I'm going to get rid of last name. Why? Because that's the text field last name. So I'm going to get rid of it. And I'm going to add a hyperlink field. Because we now want the last name to be a hyperlink. And then I can rearrange these. What header do I want for this? Well, I still want a last name, right? Here's where the fun starts. We have two fields. Data text field, data navigate URL field. The text field is the text of the link. In other words, that's what the user is going to see and what the user is going to click on. What is that going to be? It's going to be last name. What field are we going to pass on the URL? User ID. Now, here's probably the tricky part, because we're sort of back to where we were before, right? How are we formatting that URL? Because we're not just passing the user ID. We're, we have to pass the user ID to a specific page, all right? So I'm going to call the page 
vote history or voting history. I haven't made this page yet. Voting history. Dot ASPX. What's going to come after that? That's the name of the page I created. Question. Question mark. And then what? ID. ID equals what? User ID. No. Zero. Brackets. Zero. Brackets. So the zeroth parameter we're popping down in there. Is there a curly bracket? That's a curly bracket, right. Now, we're not going to be able to really test this too well yet because we haven't created that page, but we can at least look at the HTML that's created and make sure it generates the link the way that we think it should be. Okay? So I can click OK. And I can run this. Search. Now Huffman is a link, Huber's a link, and Harms is a link. And if you look on the bottom of the screen, you can see their, their IDs are passed too. Uh, another way that we can look at this is go and do a view source. I'm teaching in addition to this ASP.NET class, in our mobile web development class, we're talking about PHP stuff. You don't know how many times I have said view source in the past two days, right? Because I think that's something that people miss. A lot of times when people are debugging or making sure that's correct, they'll stare at their PHP code or they'll stare at their ASP.NET code. And yeah, that's where you're going to have to fix it eventually. But by viewing the source, you can get insight about what this is actually making. What is it producing? And we can use that then to make sure and see if it's right or not. In this case, it sure looks like it's right. Voting history dot ASPX question mark ID equals two. I'm assuming those are the right IDs. I should probably look them up to be sure, but I'm going to trust that I did that, that that's correct. All right. Now I'm ready to move on to do the voter history page, voting history. Questions at this point? All right, let's go and let's make a voting history page. Controls do we need on this guy? Remember what this is. We want, and again, we're going to do this bit at a time. We want the person's name on the top. We want a list of everything they voted on on the bottom. And we want the picture on the top at first. We're going to do this in this order. We're going to get this working. We're going to get this work, uh, or we're going to get this working. We're going to get this working. Then we're going to get this working. Because these two things we've already done before, more or less. This one's a brand new one. All right? And then, as part of that, we're going to link over to the results page. So, first thing I want to do is I want to retrieve the data from the user's table. What controls do I want on this page? What do I need? Let's take inventory. I need a data source. What about for everything on the page? How many data sources do I need? And I just flashed the correct answer. <laughs> yeah, good. How many data sources do we need? The two or three. Okay. This sounds like either an auction or that TV show Name That Tune. Do we see four? Or I can do that in one data source. I'll give you a hint. It is two or three. It's two. Because conceptually, this is stuff from the user table. This is stuff from the votes and possible answers and poll and all those tables. So conceptually, this is two chunks of data. All right? So we don't know how to put the picture in, but we know the picture is related to the user. All right? So 
Let's go on and let's do the first data source. Configure data source. Connection, pick the same old connection. What's this SQL statement going to look like? Select. User ID. First name. Last name. From user. Am I done? How many users do I want to show on this page? One. How do I know which user I want to see? When I clicked on. And put differently, where am I going to get the information concerning which user I want? Okay. In the user ID. Well, and how does that get to this page? I guess is the question. The query string. Okay. It's important to realize that because that's, that's the only way we've talked so far about how one page communicates with the other is via a query string. So, so I can say where user ID equals what? Question mark. It's a value we're going to supply at runtime. It's a value we're going to fill in later. Next, where do we get the value from this? Query string. And what's the value called on the query string? It's called just ID. Right? Remember, when I made the link, when I formatted that, it said ID. And we can test this. And there it works. All right. Now what do I need? Or am I ready to test this? Uh, I want uh, maybe a grid view, but probably a details view. Because remember, a details view is good at showing one thing. And, and in this case, we're showing one particular user, as opposed to a list of users. So I'm going to go in here and say SQL data source. And I should be good to go. So I don't want that. Set. And I thought I'd done that. I'm going to set user list as my default start page. So I do a search, click on that. First name Don, last name Huffman. Arms so on. Okay. Let's get their voting history. What tables do I need to show what they voted on in each poll? Possible answer is one. And vote. Pardon me? And, vote. and votes another. And do we need any other of them? I'm thinking we need the poll as well to see what the question was that they voted on. Yeah, I think you had on the original uh, assignment, I think one of the category displayed also. Okay, and the category two. All right, for good measure. All right. So, I can go in here and say, I changed my mind on categories, less typing. So, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to create my new SQL data source. Configure it, same old connection. 
and I'm going to say select and being lazy I'm not going to put in just the fields I need because ultimately well I will be I, no I I'll rewind I really just need the question and the answer text so that's what I'm going to put in select question comma answer text from user uh, actually I don't need the user table vote possible answer and poll let me make sure I got those table names right poll possible answer where what do I need to do on the where clause need to join all these together. So I have to say where vote dot possible answer ID equals possible answer possible answer ID and Possible answer poll ID equals poll dot poll ID. Three tables, each with a single part. So I need two things in the where clause that correspond to it, right? One to join table one to two, one to join two to three. What else do I need to put on the where clause for this guy? Need a filter by the user. So I need to say and user ID equals question mark. I'm going to throw in for good measure the poll ID because I'm going to need it in a minute. All right. I'm going to need it when I create the link to my other page. All right. So let's go and test this. Where am I getting the value from that from? Query string. Query string. And what's it called? ID. ID. All right. I'd have to look to see if this is right. I'm assuming it's right, and you should verify it, but I'm pretty sure I voted in that poll that I use an Android, so I'm pretty sure that's right. All right, now I need my grid view, and I need to marry this guy to the data source. And if we go in, Search for H, Huber uses iOS. Zellers uses Android. All right. Two more things we have to do. Real quick. Yeah, go ahead. How did you marry them together? I uh, go and pick the data source, choose data source. Okay. Yeah. Two more things I have to do. One, I have to link to my results page. All right. What's the results page name? It's named, cleverly enough, results. Now, what else would it be beneficial to know? I need to know what this is expecting on the query string. So I'm going to look at my SQL data source, and I'm going to refresh my memory, it's looking for the, the, the ID of the poll on the query string. And it's, it's called ID. So I can go in here and I can 
Abbott Carlo.